<laughs> you can't ghost finger somebody. No one has ever said you can't ghost finger someone. By Artisport.com. He has been the uh, uh, the pit commentator at a couple of races this year. He does work with the NASCAR guys. He's got a Netflix show, uh, a couple of the Netflix shows going on. He's a very, very busy guy. You may remember from Top Gear a few years back. It's Rutledge Wood. What's up, man? How are you? Good. How are you guys doing? Thanks for coming on. I appreciate it. I really, really oh, appreciate my, it. My pleasure. I'm sure you're a busy guy. And uh, Blair Army. You know, I didn't know if you wanted to hide from Blair Army or not, but uh, <laughs> uh, thanks for uh, for calling in. So, Rutledge, what? Um, you, look, you've been around Supercross a while. You, you've, I, I think you were around a few years back, even. So it's not like your first yeah. time ever seeing the sport. I remember seeing you at Anaheim or something. Um, That's right, A one A one twenty fourteen. Yeah, my first one I got to cover. What do you think of our sport? What do you think of Supercross? I love it, man. I love it. Uh, shout out to the Blair Army. The the funny thing is, um, here's what I know about the sport. It's it's incredible. Uh, the athleticism it takes is is so insane. The stuff that I see each time I'm there, I learn more and more. You know, I'm so fascinated by people like Dirtworks and who those guys are and the way they look at. You know, a situation we saw when I was down in Orlando, man, it was it was raining bucket yep. at, at noon. And we came out there, and for that team to be so good and so efficient and we did not have a crap race that night was unbelievable. Like, that, yeah. just there's so few places in the world where you would have a team that's that good and that qualified. So, uh, for me, I'm one of these people that I absolutely love the sport. Um, I, of course, was a, was a big uh, Carmichael fan and – um, and, and MC and uh, James Stewart. I mean, I've, I've Chad Reed. It's hard not to love right. so many of these guys that we've been watching forever. So the funny thing I can tell you is, I learned the first time I covered A one is that Supercross fans are different. And to me, <laughs> mostly, I'll just hit it right on the on the head. I don't mind going after it. Here's what it is: it's a bunch of really insecure dudes that think if someone new comes in, that it's like a band that that everyone loves because they haven't been signed, and then right. the moment you hear them on the radio. They're the same people. They're like, all oh, these guys sold out. You bet they sold out every damn seat because yeah. they wanted to be able to pay for stuff. So that's what I think is funny about not all of them. I don't want to blanket it. But the bros right. that, yes, like, yeah. that, that are disturbed by someone like me coming in, they're really funny because they're also the most transparent people. Like, I feel bad. This guy on Twitter today picked on me, and he's like, this redneck needs to go back to NASCAR. And I pointed out the irony of a person wearing an affliction shirt saying that. And the dude changed his picture and I felt so bad about it. I was like, bro, you don't have to do that. And the cool thing is, yeah. and I think you probably saw talking to, to Daniel, but, like, dude, Daniel's awesome. I love Will. She and I have a bunch of uh, of friends in common from her covering Rally Cross. Of course, mm -hmm. one of my best friends, Tanner Fouts, that I did talk here with. But I knew at Orlando, because it had been a few years since I've been covering race, I was at Atlanta last year. That was the last event I got to take my daughters to because, again, I'm a fan, yeah. and it, it's funny. Um, I knew that people were gonna be like, "Who, who's this guy?" Right. But it's a, it's a funny thing because they, their first thought is, "Well, I must be there to take Daniel's job." Oh you yeah. Can't, <laughs> that's not how this stuff works, and I get that people don't understand television, and a lot of uh, these fans don't. The, at least the, this vocal minority, they truly don't get motorsports, and that's okay. That's not their job, but you know. To have the experience of someone like Daniel, who was elbow to elbow with Ricky, and, and dude, when someone looks at, like, I loved watching him Saturday night at Arlington when he watched Roxon out of the gate. Dude, Daniel was a rocket. He flew over there, went right to it, and was like, hey, guys, here's the camera. Give me what I need. Because if people, and I know a lot of people don't know, but, you know, our job on the TV side is to constantly look for things that, hey, here's something we can sell. Yeah. Here's an idea. Here's this and that. Well, I am not that guy during a race. And you, there's a reason why. It's because that's not my job, and right. I'm not there to add that. I'm there to help people understand, like, how big this stuff is, the people it, 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 it really takes. I was on the phone earlier with, with, uh, with Ricky. We were talking this afternoon, just kind of recapping everything. And it's funny because Ricky had no idea where the flaggers came from. Right, right. <laughs> and I just want to point out that I get one person at home may not get that, but guess what? Like, yeah. The the question I raised today is like, well, what if you don't know what people really want to see? Like, what if they have a different feeling of you? The reason that Top Gear worked 
and we did seven years and 72 shows is because if you were into cars, we would give you that information. And that's, that's what I am. I love cars. I love everything with an engine. But guess what? The reason that so many wives and girlfriends and kids love that show is because we were just idiots being idiots, talking about the same sort of stuff that you and I would. So yeah. that's, in a nutshell, like that's kind of where I, I come from. So I don't mind the this small it's only been like 10 dudes honestly that have had anything to say one guy (laughs) put up a brilliant meme that i just want to say i get it like i have a great sense of humor as a person i i think things are funny i've i've laughed at lots of my life somebody put up this meme and it was a picture of jason momoa on a red carpet and it was like a a good broadcast and jason momoa was running up on whoever the actor was and it said rutledge wood i just want you to know dude that's funny. I, I can absolutely <laughs> laugh at that. Here's what makes me not laugh at a person like that. Whoever that dude is, is so scared and insecure as a human being that he's not even, that's not even his page. Yeah. So I don't know how to tell people like, bro, I made it through eighth grade in Alabama. There's nothing on the internet that a stranger is going to say that's going to genuinely affect me in any capacity. Yeah. So yeah. I, as you know, everybody's got an opinion. Right. But they're not always right. And like the the day they announced Top Gear and they used a picture. Now here's what I should tell you. NASCAR used to tell me I had to wear a, a tuxedo to the banquet. Okay. And I thought that was dumb. Because to be fair, half of our fans don't wear shirts in the grandstands. Why do I need to wear a tuxedo <laughs> and act like I'm a big deal? It's not it's not my thing. I yeah. don't there's a reason I wear jeans and, and a plaid shirt everywhere. So I decide one year I'm going to make fun of these guys back. So I went and got a rental tuxedo in Las Vegas for the banquet. It's pink. It's about six sizes too big. (laughs) And the day they announced Top Gear, Jalopnik or somebody else found that picture. Oh, yeah. And used that as their release. And I just want you all to know, there's nothing that anyone could say on the Internet that's worse than that day. Like that was (laughs) – I just told my mom, just don't get on the Internet today. Yeah. There's a bunch of bros that are – and that's another one of those times that like Top Gear at the time was the most viewed show in the world. Yeah. Except the bros here that watched didn't know that. So they thought like – Oh, I've got something special, and there's no way. Well, guess what? Like yeah, yeah. those guys, the UK guys got paid from our show. We we didn't like steal the name. It was a franchise show. We had half the producers that they did. It was a co co branded show with mm-hmm. History and BBC. So we were in like a hundred countries in eighty different languages. Yeah, and those guys only. I mean, we didn't get fired for the record. BBC screwed that up, but. Uh, you know, it's funny that everybody has these opinions and they're so unique. They're so coveted that we're not, there's only like 12 human conditions. We're all the same. We just right. like to think we're real special for five minutes. So yeah. I love the sport. I don't mind the tangling with people. And, and as you know, you don't have to wage every war, but sometimes it's funny to just hold a mirror up and ask people if they like what they see. Right. Well, it's funny that you went on to my social stuff today and you, you, you basically went on, and then when you would talk to these guys, they would change their tune right away. They're like, "Oh, cool, man, right on!" <laughs> like, it's Dude, just, absolutely. Yeah. But that's how almost, for the record, that's how probably ninety-five percent of interactions go. I know, right? If you look at people who say something, because it's a, at at the core of it, all they really want to do is be heard. And people think, well, if I'm nasty, I'll get their attention, bro. That's not how it works. If you tell me, "Hey, what did you think of this?" or "What did you notice?" But I'll answer that all day. Every time I'm in an airport or, you know, in a rental car shuttle, I'm writing people back because I feel like if I go to work, that's their time. I signed up for this. I totally get it. But there's that weird line of what people, their perception, and and it obviously must be reality. And I didn't tangle with anybody on there. I just pointed out, like, hey, uh, it's different than you think. And even, like, I heard you say something when you were on there with Dan. You're like, you know, I could be down there doing that sort of thing. And all I would say is, like, absolutely you could. But you'd have to suffer the same problem, which is, well, why are you talking to, to us about flaggers? Right, right. Yeah, well, exactly. Yeah. Because it no, it's, it's a huge, it's a huge thing that these incredible people God, show up every out. single week. And without them, dude, we can't race. Yeah. So the fact that, like, I here's what's, why I'm a dork. I, and, and, again, I don't want to say that I ride, like, anyone that – actually ride. I have a, a KLX 110 <laughs> yeah. that I put around in the backyard with my kids and I got them the little Jeremy McGrath electric razors. I got hurt on my bike two weeks ago because one of their friends was riding with us. Fear locked on me. Like he went, he was on the other side of the damn yard 
turned, went straight and locked on me. And I was like, oh, I'm going to punt this kid. So I had to lock it up, ended up, my foot got like trashed under the tire anyway. I wish there had been a flagger there for me. Yeah, you could you could have used the flagger, right? So. I absolutely could have. I was watching that practice as we were shooting that piece. I saw this dude's chain slap off, and immediately I start waving the yellow flag. And the guy next to me, Bill's like, "No, no, don't wave it, don't wave it." I was like, "That guy don't, lost his chain. That bike's done." And he was like, "Oh, yeah, yeah, wave that." Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> thinking like, "This isn't going to make the piece." And then of course, where do you think my head went next? Hey, we got to get that chain off before it gets spit onto the dude behind them yeah, yeah. or or us or whatever. And they're like, no, 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 you can't go out there. I was like, oh, yeah, cool. I'll let somebody else go. So then, you know, when you're doing that flag position, for the record, you have about three whoops that you can see that accident happening in slow motion. And so, again, this guy went down on a 250. And because I've flipped a super light truck out in Surprise, Arizona, on the whoops before, I know what it feels like to be a quarter turn off the whoops. Right. And it sucks. Right. And I saw this cat go, and I started waving the flag. And again, people were looking at me like, what are you doing? I was like, oh, yep, there it goes. Okay. So All right. I just yeah. think stuff like that is cool. It's different. And it's I always try to remind people, like, sometimes I've got to go to crazy things in NASCAR races that are wild. And top. Well, it turns out these tracks work really hard to get people there and entertain them. And, and my job is to always try to show what it's like to be there. So I'm going to do some different stuff. Well, Orlando was a little more limited to some of the people I think were a little, I don't want to say nervous about it, but it, but they were not as comfortable as that notion as, as they were for Arlington. And so that's the kind of stuff that we yeah. want to do something that's fun and different in Atlanta. Right. And uh, at the end of the day, I just want to highlight these people that make it all happen. Right. DV? Uh, can I go? Yes. Okay. I'm DV, by the way. We never met. I see you on TV too. I used to race uh, a little bit here and there. You were. You got right. a lot of fans on online too, brother. Yeah, but what you got to understand is the sport is not mainstream. You know, it's it's very a core sport. People that watch it, it's only half a million people watching this. You know, yeah. like it's it's a small thing. Um, sure. Uh, Do you think it should be though? Uh, yeah, but. No, but that's what it is. And uh, so yeah. people, they don't care. They don't care about flag girls. They don't care about the other stuff, the, the stuff they already know. What they want to see is every passes on a the race. They get pissed when they don't show passes. They get pissed when we don't see replay of crashes. Uh, they get pissed because they did not see Marvin crash in a practice uh, in the e race, uh, race last, yeah. last weekend. Um, and that's the, the core. They want... The hundred percent of the sport, they don't really care about the rest, you know. And the thing yeah, is, and that's unfortunate because you and I know you need sponsors, you need eyes. Like we need growth. Yeah, for but every if, motorsport, if if we right? if you want growth, my friend, we shouldn't be on Peacock. We should you we should be free on YouTube and get millions of people, and then after we can charge them, you know. But we we're doing all the TV backwards kind of. But that's not the point. The mm -hmm. point, like you getting hit, is because you're an outsider, you know. And if I go. I'm I'm one of the guys that knows maybe the most about the sport or has been, you know, in it, right. winning races. I've coached a champion. Uh, I watched all the races the last 25 years at least. Um, but if I go to a NASCAR race and I talk about where the flag girl comes from, I, I'm going to get hate yeah, because they don't give a shit about me but right? because you're an outsider. You know, it's because the sport is core. Cool. You know, we want people – we. Who do they love? Yeah. They love David Bailey. They love Ricky Carmichael. They love Fro. They don't like yeah, Ralph. Well, no, they don't like Ralph. They don't like, that, like they don't like Lee. Well, they don't like Todd funny. Harris. <laughs> you know, here's why here's why they stink. They get mad, they, they they bitch about Ralph, and then Ralph's gone, and then they bitch that Ralph. Yeah, 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 for sure. you know, That's exactly just, what I'm trying to say. You yeah, you yeah. ping yeah, pong the, the problem. What you're missing, though. That that doesn't make it right. That makes it what the status quo is. Yeah, and the it, problem I'm is not saying, only half a million I'm not people saying it's right. I'm not saying it's right. It's understandable. It's understandable. Yeah. You know, and that's the way it is. And, you know, and you shouldn't go online and tell them, you know, the fans are insecure because they talk shit about you. You know, oh, no, no. Like, don't get I, you. Don't get but hurt because people don't like you in a sport. No, he's because not hurt. He's because not hurt. Ralph gets hit. Lee gets hit. Uh, uh, Ricky also sometimes when he miss uh, names, you know, the, the, the core of this uh, defense, they're tough. They're tough. They're tough like the sport. Exactly the same well, thing. The, well, and I some think, of them you're right. 
some of them are tough, but some of them like this perception of toughness because that's what they're holding to be uh, like uh, unique nah, to them. I yeah. do. Th- I mean, I listen. Uh, you, you, yeah, I, yeah. I, you're gonna have the. Here's what I'll tell you, DV. What the what the what the powers that be. I feel TV. like DV was getting to a point, and I didn't mean to cut him off before the question. Right, so right, I'm right. Sorry if I did. Um, the the powers that be are like, hey, the core fans, they will watch this no matter what. Because they love it. Because yeah, they're core. But the mainstream so guys, no, no, they but, will not pay to watch something they don't know. But I'm so with that's you. why I'm, I'm telling you. you, he has to be on a free platform. That okay, but that's another gets, topic that's for another, another story. Okay. You're, you're right. But, but yeah, if we yeah. had, right. uh, instead of having our core, which is 400, 500,000 people watching the race, you know, it's a small thing. There's a, there's a great article about how yeah. the professional bull riders grew. And okay. it was one of the things was giving it away. Giving the TV away. That's what I'm, exactly yeah. what I'm trying yeah, to say. Yeah, yeah. Put them for hey, free on YouTube, on Facebook. But let me Elmer. finish. It's, it's not let, Rutledge. Let me, okay, sure, sure. <laughs> and uh, uh, that's like the sport. And then you can come in, a guy like you, and tell them about the... If there is 3 million people, like 2.5 million, they don't know crap about motocross. And we have an outsider talking about how it works and how they make jumps and how they put the, the monster sign and where the, 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 the flagger comes from. <laughs> yes, there, there, there is like there is a market for it. There's a market for, sure. but, but not today with the, the 500,000 people that watch the race because they know all of this and don't really care where the, who they well, got the flagger here's the, from. Here's the most interesting question I've got for you. What if you're wrong? What if the notion that you're saying about this whole projection and all these things, what if you don't actually know? So you're basing all the things that you're talking about just strictly on your <laughs> experience, your thoughts. I don't think you've run a network. I'm, I'm assuming you've not run – a, a, a successful motorsport brand like Feld has. So it's possible that you don't have all the answers, right? Uh, uh, we, we plateaued. Well, just true or false. This no, is easy. It's l- not l- a true l- l- Listen. It's so, okay so, if you don't. Okay, okay. We, I'm going to say this. We were like uh, 20 years ago when our ESPN2, uh, a week delay, right? Uh, obviously, more eyeballs than Peacock, right? I have nothing against Peacock. I like it. You know, I pay my 4.99. I watch the races. Great. Um, but you know, I don't own NBC. Though. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this isn't Rutledge's. Right? Right? Yeah, DV. I, I understand. But that's where, sure you and that's, you that's and where we are. That's, that's where we are right now. Right. The sport is on Peacock. And I like it. It's fine because I'm a Good. fan. I'm, I'm a ex writer. I like the sport. So I and have, I I like have what I need. Rather have it and most of the time. You'd rather have it two hours delayed than not at all. Yeah, because, but for yeah. me, let me finish. For me, sure. uh, most of the time, I watch the races on mute because Ricky and whoever is next to him, they don't teach me nothing, right? Because I, I know all of this. I'm here to actually t- tell that's people. That's not cool to me. Like, I, don't, I think that, that's a mistake. It's not a mistake because uh, I'm a, I have a different eyes than you from the sport. But DV, you know, but I'm like, like 100% in this. Someone, thing. If so muted, I understand. If someone muted you every time that, they were listening to this podcast. Yeah, they, they would mute me if I was on a NASCAR yeah. on a hockey show because I no, don't know what I'm not, talking that's, about. That's not, that's not apples to apples. It's exactly it. I, w- okay, go well, ahead. You people also, don't like, people don't well, like I think, outsiders in our sport. I know, I know but DV, do you I agree you, with this? I do agree with you, DV, but you're acting like Rutledge called NBC Sports and said, hey, I want to come on your Supercross no, race. No, no, no. They, 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 they are trying. The powers that be I are understand, trying. Yes, I yeah, yeah. Understand so, that. So I understand that. I understand. You're getting mad at You Rutledge. cannot get Burrell because there's a motorcross <laughs> fan that tell you you suck. He's not you know, it. Just take it. No, don't be, you, you, don't, and, and don't be emotional oh my, about I'm, it. Just you know, do your not, show and that's it. He's not. You get the irony, though, of you're saying you're upset that I said some of these fans are insecure. <laughs> you, yeah. get the ir- you get that, right? Like, yeah, be, because be seriously, between you, and, at all. B- between you and me, when, when you come on, I go to the bathroom, you know, so because I don't care. That's totally and, fine, but I don't know and who And most you, of the people are the same are, as me. That's the reality of, but here's the thing. I want to tell fans at home who you are, why you're important, why you matter. So if you mute that, you also are saying that there's no chance someone new could ever know you. And that's a mistake. Uh, so what I'm trying yeah. to tell you is every time that Ricky's talking or someone else, like for you muting it, you're saying, I don't care about the growth of this sport. I don't care if we get new people. And that's my point of like, maybe you're wrong. Maybe that's not the way that you look at motorsports. Because the reality is I want you watching NASCAR too, because we should all be on the same page 
which is Pro Motorsports, number one. Number two, this podcast has sponsors. So don't get upset that someone else has to keep the lights on in the same way. Like, you just got to choose what side you're on. And I think we're on the same side. I think and so, And I get too. that you don't, you don't have to like me because I'm from the outside. I just want you to know that I've I have nothing wrong with you. you I, because I, I'm not. I, you know, I have, there's nothing. I just trying to understand why you get you get hit with on online or whatever. He's just you know. Well, it, it's, well, it's, all it's, it's, rela- here's the thing. It's it normal. All it's normal, and then and, and, and then you think like you it get a little. Have to be normal. You though. get a little burrowed about something that's not really relevant. You know, it's normal. You you just. I don't think Rutledge is butthurt. He's fine. Yeah. He, 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 but, yeah, no, I'm totally cool. But, but, nothing, you, nothing can, but like, you don't have to defend yourself nothing, on, on uh, the guys that has five followers on Twitter or who gives a shit. Rutledge, you nothing ab- can... You're absolutely you're right. You, Rutledge, don't you don't need to answer and then say thanks to the guy that, that say, oh, you're cool, and then tell a guy that don't like you, oh, you're insecure, go uh, back to your redneck. No, it, it does, he was, it, you know, like, it's not right. It's uh, not right. Uh, Rutledge... That's, hold on. Genuinely, okay. yeah, and you can jump in. That doesn't make any sense. I just want you to know, and, and I, we can disagree, like, as a person. I just want you to know, there's nothing wrong with telling people thanks for watching. Again, I think it's possible that you may not understand how all of these things work because we're totally different people. Yeah, and if you look at the But the thing that is, I, do, is I don't know you, and experience. then you don't know me. Well, you know, um, but me, right. if you knew me, you had a different... Uh, right, like, nothing can uh, top the, the top gear blowback i'm sure like you mentioned uh so yeah yeah, nothing and you're used to it and 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 all of that i I think i'd like to see rutledge you go on nascar which you'd go on a ton and then just start talking supercross i just would love that just start talking about absolutely i've for the record and i'm again this is where it's a bummer that y'all haven't seen but like i've interviewed dungy at more than one race the first time ricky showed up at phoenix when he was in a truck for Kevin Harvick, I'm sure y'all were watching because you no, were not. Sports. No. Of course you were. <laughs> yeah. But there's the problem that we're right. all on the same side. Right. right. So, number one, we should be all supporting those things because this, these guys, even the dude that you've never heard of on that 250 deserves our respect because that's hard as hell, man. And he gets out there and he throws a leg over knowing there's probably no chance he can get in that main tonight, but he has a dream. And I think all of those people deserve to be talked about. And I think they all have a story. To, to get to hold, like Daniel lined it up so I could hold that pit board. Dude, that's number one. I don't understand that at all. There's no way I could look over there and get any sort of rational note. And that's why I had to ask Ricky, like, did you for real pick up something from that? Because I don't understand. I can't yeah, process yeah. <laughs> information. That's a genuine question. I don't get it. And that's why I asked it. But you know, all of these things to me are still are still related. We can be totally different people and you not understand. And it's possible that I could be wrong or you could be wrong. But all of the – it shouldn't be normal. It should not be normal that anyone goes to work and strangers just think it's awesome to take a dump on them. Because I wouldn't <laughs> want them to do that to you. And at the core, you as a human being shouldn't want that for me either. And that's probably where we differ. So I don't mind telling someone – who says, dude, I loved you out there on Supercross. I don't mind telling them thanks for watching because guess what? They're important to what we do as, as, a, as a group, as a network, as how we're trying to build all these things. So I just want you to know, at no point will I apologize for holding up a mirror to some people, not to all. But yeah. I don't, like if a dude's making fun of me and he's wearing an affliction shirt, I'm sorry. Yeah, you're putting yourself in, in the line of fire. What's wrong with that fiction show? Sure. No, I, I, Nothing. If you're into it, <laughs> yeah, I'm so, not. Yeah. It's just funny that he called me a redneck, and all the rednecks I know wear shirts like that. So, um, again, it is, it is all about insecurity because it's all about pride. If we didn't treat each other like you are, saying, why is this outsider here? Instead, you're saying, man, this is really cool. A dude that didn't have to be there, who loves motorsports, who loves the sport, signed up to go there knowing that some of these bros are going to go after him and he still did it with a smile. Well, that's pretty cool. Like maybe it could be like that. I don't know. It won't change it, but I still want to tell your story because the person that turns on the race on Saturday may not know who you are. And I think every time you threw a leg over the bike, that was for a reason. So maybe we could get to a point where we can all talk and we can be together because like, People may not know that, that, like, Jeremy McGrath has been a friend of mine for 10 years. That school bus that was in Dooney's is my old bus. Like, these are my friends. These are my people. I've been watching for years. It's okay that I haven't been covering it. I'm not Daniel. I don't have those skills, those experience, but I'm not pretending to. It's just someone else's idea of what they think I must be there doing. But if they didn't mute it and walk out, if they listen, they might realize, like, oh, 
I had no idea the flaggers came from local tracks and actually people could sign up to do it. Yeah. How about that? That would be really cool. Uh, Dangerous as all hell, but really yeah, cool. Yeah. Uh, well, let's, we got to, we pressed up for time for our next guest, but we do have, I do have some other questions for you. First of all, um, mm-hmm. what, so you've done a lot of stuff. You've got the, the floor is lava, which I've watched a few episodes, by the way, the pandemic, I had to watch it. It was a bit of a hit there. So, uh, are you doing another series, another season of that? I hope so. We got 37 million viewers in the first month, Damn. which was, yeah, yeah. we were, I think, number seven on Netflix for the year. So I feel really, really good about it. I hope we get to. So you do, you've got that going on. you got the barbecue thing. you got NASCAR. Uh, you've got all your own stuff going on. Um, what do people, when you're just meeting people, just, just on a rental car shuttle bus, like you said, or anywhere else, yeah. what do they want to talk to you about? What do they know you from? Top Gear? Lava? It's funny. It's it. it it was all it was all Top Gear for so long, and then I did a bunch of cooking shows. So then it was almost like it was reverse, where like the wives were getting to pick, and then the guys were like, "Oh, it's a dude from Top Gear." But I'm telling you, once I did Flores Lava, it has switched so much because every kid, like my daughters, all of their friends know me now from that. Right, and from, from Lava. Yeah, big yeah. surprise they weren't they weren't watching me on every NASCAR race and Hyperdrive on Netflix and stuff like that. So that's. That's the weird thing is that it feels like there's a lot of different stuff people could know me from now, yeah. which is hilarious to me, yep. and, and I pinch myself. But lava is a big one for, for I, current. You I, know? I would think so for sure. We uh, we got some questions for you. We we do an X Brown goggle tear off segment, and uh, our buddy Jason Wygant uh, sent sent in some questions. Uh, again, EKS twenty is the code to save with Motorsport.com with X Brown goggles. So. Rutledge, the deal with this segment is you got 30 seconds, all right? Uh, so 30 seconds okay. to answer. So, uh, Travis, let's uh, let's go. All right, Rutledge. Um, what's a cool bike transport vehicle that no one has thought of yet? Ooh. I just built a 62 step van um, that's like a bagged <laughs> hot rod from bread truck. Uh, I'm going to say a 96 Buick Roadmaster station wagon. Just cut the back out like an El Camino and just load it right there in the back. All right, sixteen seconds. Good job. <laughs> all right, next one. Uh, we're just doing all his. Yeah, let's just right. do three. Okay. Yeah. All right, right. Uh, what do you think about filling the area between whoops with lava? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's brilliant. It's going to be painful, and each time people fall in the lava on floors, lava, I don't know where they go. So, like, it would be weird because they could fall in, and then suddenly they could just be in like the broadcast booth doing a wheelie. So, that, I would be worried about that. 17 seconds. Hey, was there some serious injuries that we didn't see on TV that they didn't make the cut? Uh, like anything? Like- um, I don't think – well, it, you asked about why – y'all were saying we've got a shoulder X. I had to explain to a friend, you know, some of these ones um, – who was it that went down so hard and got their bell rung? Um, oh, Webb. Saturday in Arlington. Web. Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah. Like, dude, that was massive. Right. And, and there's a reason we don't show those, and it's because – it's not a good idea um, legally. There's a lot of stuff going on, but that that is both from the sport, the network. There's a million things. There's a reason we don't show things like that. And at the end, it's just we want everybody to be okay. But it's not our job to to show those. I still can't believe Malcolm went for the comeback and got ejected from. The, yeah. Oh, that hurt, man. That was a tough one. But uh, um, well, no, I was I was more asking about lava injuries, but that's okay. Oh gosh, yeah. great. Oh, sorry. Hello. Yeah, I was like um, saying anything that we didn't watch. Yeah. No, I'm so sorry, man. I blew that. Uh, no. No. So no, no one got hurt. We, okay. had, we had a bunch of Navy SEALs run the whole thing. Oh, you did? Okay, sure yeah, that, yeah. Right. Yeah, that no one, they had to do that same sort of thing for Wipeout. I think it's an insurance thing. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, nobody got hurt. All right. Last question for Rutledge Wood. All right, last one. Motor, uh, motorcycle racers shift gears and use the clutch. NASCAR Cup cars use four-speed manual transmissions. But what do you estimate is the percentage of riders and drivers that actually drive a stick in their personal vehicle? Oh gosh, it's so sad. It's so low. It's got. I bet in the U.S. it's got to be like five percent or so. I mean, it's like two percent of new cars have a manual, so it's got to be something crazy, like five or six percent. Is that it? Two percent of cars are manual transmissions. Jeez. Of the new ones, yeah, yeah new dude, ones. there's hardly any. Wow. Uh, Rutledge Wood, uh, you've passed the X Brown Goggle tear off segment. Thank you for that. Uh, EKS twenty is the code to save with the uh, X Brown Goggles. So, uh, what's next for you? Rutledge, where are you going next? Uh, I'll be uh, I'll be at uh, Atlanta uh, on the tenth. I'll be be excited to be there. It's my home track. That one's going to be massive. It sounds like, and yeah. it's an afternoon race. So 
Uh, I'm excited to do that, DV. Don't worry. I won't talk about the flaggers that day. I'll find something new, and I'll try to – maybe I can text you so you know when to go make a sandwich. There we go. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, thanks for coming on, Rutledge. I'd like to keep talking for sure. We got our next guest. Hunter Lawrence is coming up. Uh, so, uh, oh, right on. Tell him to say congrats. I, I met his brother uh, day he won. And, yeah. and, man, how awesome is that family? How yeah, cool is that? Hey, really thanks cool. for having me. I appreciate it, and I uh, appreciate what you do. No problem. Thanks, thanks, man. Appreciate it. Uh, that's uh, Rutledge. What everybody brought to you by Artisport.com. Let's get Hunter Lawrence on the phone if we can. Artisport.com. All products under ten dollars. Jeez, you were heated. You got heated with Rutledge. Sorry, we couldn't take the phone calls. By I the got, way. I got to defend my the the Supercross fan base. And yeah, but the Supercross fan base was calling him like a fat redneck on my on my social. They they call me worse. <laughs> you're fine. Just get over it. Fuck yeah. you. You're fired. <laughs> You know, uh, 